Upper V. Wilson. I am in West Yorkshire. It is the 1st of October, 2018. The time, it's Monday, and the time is 1700, 1700 hours and 21 minutes, and that's GMT. Stream of Consciousness, in my opinion. I'm posting some, um, some of the recent happenings around uh, Tommy Robinson and some of the responses from the media and then some of the responses from the state which would be the legal system uh, and I'm trying to follow uh, Mr. Robinson's brand um, and trying to understand that and the way in which people both civil society the press and the state respond to it and that has uh, led to uh, utterances, uh, articles I've read online about Israel and Israel's engagement with people right uh, of center and why uh, some in Israel would do that. Uh, my opinion, most countries that, although uh, literally uh, Israel is in the Middle East, uh, she positions herself as a Western country, quote unquote, in the Middle East. So with what I perceive as the, uh, Israel's positioning uh, as a Western country, with, uh, Israel's an anomaly in the sense that most Western countries uh, have not only their civil society that they can rely on, whether they want to or not, uh, but they can, um, they have a plethora of uh, civil society actors who travel to the country and, and seek to be of aid or service to the country. That's not true for Israel. So I'm talking dynamics here. That's not true for Israel. So for Israel, the, my belief is that, uh, my perception is that left-leaning actors, uh, civil society actors, are increasingly being thought of as those that are seek to attack the nation. Or seek uh, left-leaning actors, foreign left-leaning actors, are, 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 uh, are, are seen as facilitating people in person that seek to attack the nation, destabilize it. So I, I, I think um, because of that, and, and again, whether countries like to admit it or not, part of its vibrancy and part of the check and balances and part of the what keeps the uh, security apparatus vigorous is the opining of not only their indigenous activists, but activists globally. It's healthy for a nation to have law-abiding, left-leaning activists come into the country and critique it, but who are also willing to work with the country. There are not many left-leaning activists that are willing to do that. One of the organizations that, and I know there are others, but one of the organizations that is a foreign, quote, quote unquote, entity, entity NGO, that does position itself that way, and it's viewed with suspicion by Israel, is uh, the New Israel Fund. Um, uh, that uh, uh, crit lovingly critical of Israel. Uh, but th that's few and far between. So my op opinion is one of the reasons why I think some in Israel have reached out to the far right or some right of center and that and in that their right of center positioning these European activists they pose and dance around I belief systems and ideologies that I actually do feel are threatening to the state of Israel. But it's politically, for the moment, 
beneficial for the country Israel to befriend them because again activists can bring a vibrancy to a country a activists can bring even those of us who are left of center who challenge what the state does state's not going to let on particularly the security apparatus but we can actually be a benefit by saying look you got this wrong do it this way have you thought about doing it this way here's the research to show it here's our activism to show it but with Israel that's very difficult for her to find or connect with left-leaning activists who take an approach like I'm going to call the New Israel Fund approach. So I do think this dynamic has uh, developed where some in Israel, um, including some in the state, have embraced the far right, embraced in quotes, uh, far right activists. Um, Every country needs vibrant activism that's homegrown, indigenous, and it can, it can only help if you can get, you have a breath of fresh air coming from foreign activists. But again, that's difficult for Israel. Um, it's difficult for Israel, and it's difficult for Israel to find left-leaning activists that want to be lovingly critical of the country because that's not a positioning or a position that most left-leaning activists in Europe or for that matter in many parts of the world would take. Uh, so the country left-leaning activists I believe even if they want to take a position of I want to work with both the Palestinians and the Israelis. You don't want the taint of being seen as a puppet for the Israelis. And then I think uh, Israel uh, is uh, very sensitive to people who criticize her uh, because of that dynamic of being literally surrounded. Um, again, I'm talking dynamics here. I have personally been confused uh, about how people from those of us in this civil society actors and uh, academics, how uh, we hope to help with the, uh, facilitating a solution because it's going to have to come from multiple spaces and uh, perspectives and disciplines if we're not engaging with the Israelis. I, I don't understand how that's supposed to happen. Um, um, I think a person like me is in an unusual position. Um, I've had so many things quote unquote take me. Um, and I'm a small fish when it comes to in the pond of activism. That it's a moot point um, about the Israel quote unquote Israel taint and there is an Israel taint for left leaning activists that try to engage and work with Israelis and Palestinians it's, it's, a, um, it's not applicable to an activist like me for a series of reasons but nevertheless I think um, I wonder if there are hard left activists that are willing to engage in the space in the middle um, which can be the hardest place to be in or if that is problematic for most left-leaning activists either for because of that taint or because of their belief systems and then Israel at this particular time in her the nation's history I think has become more reticent about trusting people that don't share her ideology. Um, I'm trying to dance around some personal experience I have with Israel and how she reached out to me. Um, so I, I think I will continue that dance. I'm taking things one step at a time as I'm back in the UK about uh, disclosing things and I, I think um, I've 
disclosed enough so if people are interested they can put the pieces together. But uh, Israel, uh, some state actors in Israel reached out to me. And it was actually um, membership. I, I've attended, that's not the right word for New Israel Fund, but I've attended uh, New Israel Fund events in Chicago and New York. Um, and I have been actively involved, actively, quote unquote, in the happenings of the New Israel Fund for decades now. I do not find it problematic to work with Israeli. The um, relational dy dynamics and other dynamics between the Israelis and the Palestinians. I, I, I hope, uh, and I am left of center, and I hope and look forward to other activists left of center, center finding a way to reach out to Israel because I think one of the reasons the country has reached out to uh, some right of center is for the vibrancy of the sector that is the civil society and it's very difficult for them to engage and I would say for them that Israel owns to trust uh, uh, activists left of center I'm going to post a uh, um, this podcast with uh, a, 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 a thread I have of, uh, on Tommy Robinson and I go through it and, and look at it um, and in addition to that I'm going to post uh, a story that came out uh, over a year ago about an Israeli gentleman in London, England um, and uh, he was uh, some people say he was a state actor, some people say he was autonomous, regardless he was Israeli and he was seeking to galvanize activism uh, and, and it was mostly on the right of center. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and that's, uh, again I'm talking dynamics, uh, so you can opine on whether you think it's right or wrong. From the dynamics perspective, the way I look at it, all functioning country, nations, democracies need civil society. We may be an irritant, but only the most repressive and, dare I say, clueless nation realizes that they can function effectively without a vibrant civil society. So. Most countries begrudgingly go, leave them alone. Um, and it can only help when international people from civil society bring in yet another perspective to the country to help the country with her challenges. That is problematic for Israel for the aforementioned reasons that I've mentioned. So this is a bit of a ramble. Um, because I'm trying to, I am trying to decide what's appropriate to say and what's not appropriate to say. But in any case, I'm posting this podcast. Uh, this is Deborah V. Wilson. Um, thank you for listening.